From the earliest days I can remember, there was something about the swish of fabric and the play of colors that caught my eye. It wasn't the rugged denim or the plain tees that fascinated me, but the flowy, vibrant dresses that seemed to dance even without a breeze. My sister, who was two years older, had this one dress that seemed like a piece of art to me. It was mostly white, but it had these little blue and yellow birds scattered across, looking as if they could fly off the fabric at any moment. I used to watch her twirl in that dress, the birds seeming to come alive, and something inside me longed to feel that magic. It wasn't just the dress, though. It was the whole aura of femininity that it represented, something so distinctly different from my own world of scraped knees and toy cars. I knew even then that it was more than just curiosity. It was a deep-seated desire to experience, to be part of that enchanting world. The fabric of the dress looked soft, almost whispering secrets of a world I was keen to understand. I remember reaching out, just once, to touch it, and the material felt like nothing I had ever known. It was like touching a dream. That moment solidified something in me. I didn't just want to see the dress or touch it. I wanted to wear it. To know how it felt to have those birds fluttering around me, to see if I could catch some of their freedom and beauty for myself. But of course, there was a problem. The dress belonged to my sister, and I was just a six-year-old boy, not supposed to long for such things. Yet the desire didn't understand these rules. It was pure, unaffected by societal norms or expectations. This was the beginning of a journey I hadn't chosen, but felt compelled to follow. A path that would lead me through hidden desires and secret joys, a path of discovering and embracing the art of cross-dressing. Realizing my longing to wear that beautiful dress, I knew I had to be clever. It wasn't just a matter of asking. Things were more complicated than that. I was a six-year-old boy, and boys weren't supposed to dream of wearing dresses. So I hatched a plan, one that required patience and a bit of cunning. I started spending more time with my sister and her friends. Initially, they found it odd, this sudden interest in their games, but I was determined. I joined them in their tea parties, played with their dolls, and listened to their stories, all the while keeping my true desire hidden. I needed to become part of their world, to blur the lines between what was expected of a boy and what I truly wanted. After a few weeks of this delicate dance, I felt ready to make my move. One sunny afternoon, as we sat in her room surrounded by her toys, I casually suggested, why don't we play dress up? My heart raced with the fear of being found out and the excitement of possibly wearing the dress. To my surprise, they agreed without hesitation, thrilled at the idea of a new game. As they rummaged through the closet, pulling out various outfits and accessories, my eyes were fixed on the prize, the dress with the little blue and yellow birds. I felt a mix of excitement and fear, worried they might see through my act, but thrilled at the thought of wearing it. When it was finally my turn, they presented a simple, frilly dress for me to wear, not the one I yearned for. My heart sank, but I couldn't let my disappointment show. I needed a new plan, quickly. Let's make it more fun, I blurted out, trying to sound enthusiastic. Let's lay all the dresses on the bed and I'll close my eyes and pick one, that way it's a surprise. They giggled amused by the game's new twist, and agreed. As they laid out the dresses, I watched carefully, memorizing the exact location of the dress I so desperately wanted. With my heart pounding, I closed my eyes, turned around a few times, and then, with feigned randomness, lunged toward the spot where the dress lay. The moment felt surreal, like a dream where everything hung in the balance. I reached out, hoping, praying I had aimed correctly, and felt the soft fabric under my fingers. A wave of relief washed over me, mixed with a surge of joy. I had done it. I had outsmarted the situation and was now moments away from feeling the dress wrap around me, a secret victory in my quiet battle to express myself. The air was thick with anticipation as I clutched the dress in my small hands, the fabric cool and smooth against my skin. My sisters, 
unaware of the depth of my longing, giggled and whispered to each other, seeing this as just another playful moment. But for me, it was so much more. It was the fulfillment of a wish I could barely admit to myself. As they helped me into the dress, their laughter echoed around the room, a stark contrast to the whirlwind of emotions inside me. I felt a strange mix of joy and fear, excitement and shame. I was stepping into a world I had only dreamed of, yet part of me wondered if I was doing something wrong, something forbidden. The dress fit perfectly as if it was made for me. The fabric brushed against my skin with every movement, sending shivers of delight through my body. I looked in the mirror and saw a different version of myself, one that felt more complete, more true. The little birds seemed to celebrate with me, their colors more vibrant, their presence more comforting. My sisters continued to tease, pulling at the dress and joking about how I made a pretty girl. I tried to laugh along, to keep up the facade of this being just a game. But inside, a profound transformation was taking place. I was seeing myself in a new light, feeling a connection to this garment that went beyond mere clothing. It was as if the dress was a key, unlocking a part of me I had been forced to keep hidden. As the play continued, I became more comfortable, the initial awkwardness giving way to a sense of rightness, of belonging. The dress ceased to be just fabric and became a part of my identity, a declaration of a hidden truth I was only beginning to understand. This first experience of cross-dressing, though cloaked in the innocence of childhood play, was a pivotal moment in my journey, a step towards acknowledging and embracing the complexity of my own identity. After that first intoxicating experience with the dress, my desire to explore femininity only grew stronger. But with this growing desire came a torrent of challenges and revelations that I, still so young, struggled to comprehend. The joy I felt wearing the dress was pure and exhilarating, yet it was a joy I quickly learned to keep secret. Society's unspoken rules were clear. Boys did not wear dresses. This message, never explicitly stated but always understood, began to cast a shadow over my happiness. The more I indulged in my fascination with feminine attire, the more I felt a growing sense of isolation. At school, I observed the clear divide between boys and girls in their clothes, their behaviors, and their interests. This divide was a constant reminder of the line I was crossing in secret. My classmates, innocent in their teasing, often reinforced these gender norms, making me acutely aware of the difference between who I was expected to be and who I felt I was inside. At home, the situation was equally complex. My sisters, having shared in my initial adventure of dress-up, began to view my continued interest with a mix of amusement and confusion. They didn't understand the depth of my feelings, mistaking my actions for mere child's play. My parents, meanwhile, remained oblivious to my internal struggle, seeing my actions as nothing more than a phase, a quirk of childhood that I would soon outgrow. With each passing day, the internal conflict grew. I cherished the moments I could express my femininity in secret, feeling a sense of completeness and joy that nothing else could provide. Yet these moments were always overshadowed by the fear of discovery and the guilt of defying societal expectations. The early stages of my journey were marked by these intense, conflicting emotions. On one hand, there was the undeniable happiness and freedom that came from expressing my true self. On the other, the constant pressure to conform and hide my true desires. This period was a time of significant personal revelation, as I began to understand the complexity of my identity in a world that seemed unprepared to accept it. Growing older brought new challenges, but also new opportunities for exploration. With age, my curiosity about feminine attire evolved into a more deliberate exploration of identity. I began to experiment with not just dresses, but also makeup and various hairstyles, each element allowing me to delve deeper into the persona I felt was more genuinely me. This journey was not without its difficulties. At school, the slightest deviation from the norm could attract unwanted attention and ridicule. I remember the first time I dared to wear a hint of eyeliner, believing it subtle enough to go unnoticed. But the sharp eyes of my peers caught it immediately, leading to a barrage of questions and laughter. The humiliation was intense, 
Yet, there was also a defiant thrill in expressing a part of my true self, even in such a small way. As I navigated my teenage years, the internal tug of war between my public and private selves grew more intense. I learned to guard my secret closely, creating a facade of conformity while privately indulging in my true identity. The nights became my sanctuary, where I could experiment with my appearance and behavior without fear of judgment or ridicule. These moments of solitude were bittersweet, filled with the joy of self-expression, but also the loneliness of isolation. Despite the challenges, each step in my journey of self-discovery was enlightening. I began to understand the fluidity of gender, the spectrum of masculinity and femininity, and where I might fit within it. The societal definitions of these concepts started to seem more like restrictive boxes than absolute truths. As I grew more comfortable with my identity, I found small ways to incorporate it into my daily life. A hidden piece of jewelry under my clothes, a slight adjustment to my walk, a private smile at my reflection. Each was a silent affirmation of my true self. These acts, seemingly insignificant to an outsider, were monumental for me, each one a quiet rebellion against the expectations placed upon me. This period was a crucial phase in my journey, a time of introspection and gradual acceptance. It was marked by the pain of external ridicule and the internal struggle for self-acceptance, but also by the growing realization that my identity was valid, regardless of societal norms. The journey of self-discovery was arduous, but it was also empowering, leading me toward a deeper understanding and acceptance of myself in the complex dance of gender identity. As I transitioned from the turbulence of adolescence to the relative freedom of adulthood, my understanding of my gender identity and expression deepened. This period of coming of age was less about outward rebellion and more about internal acceptance and finding a balance that felt right for me. Navigating through the complexities of societal norms remained challenging, but with maturity came a certain resilience and confidence. I began to understand that my cross-dressing, far from being a whimsical defiance or mere curiosity, was an integral part of who I was. It was an expression of my inner self, a blend of masculinity and femininity that made me uniquely me. I experimented more openly with my appearance, no longer confined to the secrecy of my room. I attended events and gatherings in the LGBTQ community where I met others like me, those who defied traditional gender norms and expressed themselves in ways that resonated with their true identities. These experiences were incredibly affirming. They provided a sense of belonging and understanding that I had longed for, showing me that I was not alone in my journey. The ridicule and misunderstanding I had faced earlier in life didn't disappear overnight, but my response to them changed. I learned to meet criticism with a mix of patience and defiance, educating when possible and ignoring when necessary. The negative opinions of others began to hold less weight against the backdrop of my self-acceptance and the support of those who understood and embraced me. Finding a balance in my cross-dressing lifestyle was like walking a tightrope, carefully navigating between my public and private selves. But over time, the distinction between these selves blurred. I integrated elements of my feminine side into my everyday life, no longer feeling the need to compartmentalize my identity. This integration was not without its challenges, as societal expectations still dictated a certain degree of conformity, but it felt increasingly natural and right. This coming-of-age journey was transformative, it was about more than just accepting my desire to cross-dress. It was about embracing my entire being with all its complexities and contradictions. I learned to navigate the fine line between societal expectations and personal happiness, finding a place where I could be true to myself while still engaging with the world around me. Through these experiences, I came to a deeper understanding of my gender identity and expression, realizing that they were fluid and evolving, just like me. This period of growth taught me the importance of self-acceptance and the value of finding one's own path, even in the face of societal pressures and expectations. In the fullness of adulthood, my journey into the realms of identity and expression took on a new shade of confidence and self-assurance. Gone were the days of timid experiments and fearful glances. 
I had traversed the turbulent waters of self-discovery and emerged with a clearer vision of who I am. Reflecting on the path I had walked, I saw it as a mosaic of experiences, each piece a step toward understanding and acceptance. My earlier years of confusion and conflict had given way to a period of exploration and assertion, culminating in the mature acceptance of my multifaceted identity. I had developed a personal style that transcended traditional boundaries, blending masculinity and femininity in a way that felt uniquely mine. My wardrobe, once a secret collection of hidden desires, now proudly displayed an array of garments that reflected the full spectrum of my identity. Dresses and suits hung side by side, each piece a testament to the journey I had undertaken. My female persona, once a shadowy figure of my imagination, had grown into a strong and vibrant part of my life. She was not just an alter ego or a character to be donned and doffed at will, but an integral part of my being, representing the complexity and richness of my identity. In her, I found the freedom to express all the nuances of my personality, blending strength and gentleness, assertiveness and empathy in a harmonious symphony of self-expression. This acceptance was not just internal. The world around me had also changed, slowly but perceptibly. Society's rigid norms had begun to soften, creating space for diverse expressions of identity and style. Friends, family and colleagues, once sources of apprehension, had become allies, celebrating the authenticity of my journey. Their acceptance was a mirror reflecting the truth of my own self-acceptance, reinforcing the sense of validity and belonging I had long sought. In this stage of life, I found a balance that had once seemed elusive. The dichotomies of male and female, public and private, external judgment and internal truth, had blended into a cohesive whole. My identity, once a source of internal strife, had become a wellspring of strength and joy. As I moved through the world, the confidence and self-assurance I had developed were not just armor against the judgments of others, but also a beacon for those navigating their own journeys of identity. In embracing the full spectrum of my being, I had not only found peace within myself, but also offered a silent message of hope and solidarity to others on similar paths. Adulthood brought with it the acceptance I had yearned for, not just from the world, but more importantly, from within. In this acceptance, I found not just the freedom to be myself, but also the courage to share my true self with the world, embracing every facet of my identity with pride and joy. In the calm of adulthood, I stand firmly within the spectrum of my identity, a tapestry woven with threads of both masculinity and femininity. Reflecting on my journey, I see a path marked by struggle, discovery, and ultimately, liberation. The child who once secretly admired a dress has grown into a person who confidently embodies a blend of gender expressions no longer confined by societal norms. I have developed a personal style that is uniquely mine, a style that harmonizes the masculine and feminine aspects of my being. My female persona, once a hidden facet of my identity, now stands strong and proud, a testament to the journey of self-acceptance I have undertaken. She is not just a character I portray. She is an integral part of who I am, representing my creativity, sensitivity, and strength. Embracing my full identity has been a liberating experience, freeing me from the shackles of societal expectations and allowing me to live authentically. The joy and peace that come from this acceptance are profound, touching every aspect of my life and allowing me to engage with the world with a sense of wholeness and integrity. The conclusion of my story is not an end, but a celebration of a journey that continues each day. It is a message of hope and affirmation to anyone grappling with their identity, a reminder that the path to self-acceptance is fraught with challenges, but also rich with the rewards of personal freedom and authenticity. In embracing my dual identity, I have found a deeper understanding and appreciation of the diversity of human experience. I celebrate not just my own journey, but the collective journey of all who dare to defy conventions and discover their true selves. My story, marked by the transcendence of traditional gender norms, is a powerful affirmation of the beauty of personal acceptance and the boundless potential of the human spirit to evolve and flourish.